Some of Peter Bruegel the Elder's most famous masterpieces are a series of paintings based on the months and seasons of the year. The 16th century Flemish painter and printmaker, known for his landscapes and peasant scenes, painted these works as a commission for the mansion of a well to do Antwerp merchant banker and art collector between 1564 to 1565. Five paintings in the series survive, one is missing. We know that Bruegel planned six pictures, as the calendar in Northern Europe was often divided into six seasons. These were spring, summer, autumn and winter, as well as early spring and early summer. Bruegel linked his six paintings to what is known as the labors of the month. This is a reference to cycles in medieval and early Renaissance religious art depicting the rural activities that took place in each month of the year. The labors of the month are frequently found as part of large sculptural schemes on churches and in illuminated manuscripts, although Bruegel's pictures are non-religious. This illumination, from a medieval manuscript, held in Berlin State Library, shows the four seasons holding the ribbons. The months, January to June, are shown on the left side. July to December are on the right of the picture. By the 16th century, the genre of paintings of the seasons was fully developed in Netherlandish art. In his season series, Bruegel raises this work to new levels, observing human activities against the broader canvas of the recurring cycle of change, of death and renewal, in nature. In each one of Bruegel's pictures, human toil goes on endlessly, pitted against an indifferent nature. Bruegel's paintings for the commission were far larger than a typical calendar page painting, each one being approximately 150 by 90 centimeters. For Bruegel, this was a large commission, and an important one. In 1565, the Calvinist riots began, and it was only two years before the Eighty Years' War broke out. Bruegel may have felt safer with a non-religious commission, allowing him to avoid offending either Calvinists or Catholics. In the winter of 1564, northern Europe was experiencing the coldest conditions of the century, with the largest snowfalls that had been experienced in a generation. Nowhere were the effects of this vicious winter more keenly felt than in the Netherlands. Influenced by the freezing conditions that surrounded him, Bruegel painted his picture, The Hunters in the Snow, the first snowscape in art, and one of the most original paintings of all time. Never before had a painter managed to create such a convincing presentation of the coldness and the silence of the winter landscape. The painting is dominated by cold colors, white, and pale green. Interestingly, every living thing is dark. In most paintings this is not the case, but here, it heightens the impression of exhaustion. Although there is no snow falling, the range of white tones, in which greenish tints predominate, beautifully conveys the atmosphere of a snow-bound land. As you can see, a group of hunters have returned, and descend to a village on the plain below on this cold and gloomy afternoon in winter. They are accompanied by their dogs, walking with lowered heads, with their tails between their legs. The hunt has not been particularly successful, a skinny fox hangs from a spear, slung over one man's shoulder. The row of trees that recedes from the foreground, leads the eye towards the village, and the frozen ponds below. There is a real sense of the slow movement of the dogs, and the men, leaving deep imprints as they trudge through the snow. Our attention is drawn to the scenes of continuing activity in the village, to the left. Workers are preparing a pig over an open fire. This will be cooked and salted for winter. In this painting, Bruegel has captured humanity's dual relationship with winter, we both fear it and we love it. Surviving winter is part of what makes us human. Indeed, the most remarkable thing about Bruegel's painting is that even in these freezing conditions, there are people everywhere we look. The frozen pond is covered with skaters. There are couples skating together, holding hands, and children playing, with wooden toys, or chasing each other across the ice. There is a mother with a child, and boys with a sled. 
some are skating on their own, and some have fallen, flat on their faces. People sit at the edge of the lake putting on their skates, and others just watch. In Bruegel's art, it is always nature itself which renders the season apparent, like the trees and animals. The people represent only part of the broad landscape spread out before us. But in this picture, it is the landscape itself that rounds out the whole painting. This is not just a picture of a Flemish village. It also draws on Bruegel's memory of his travels, through the Alps. Bruegel was one of the few northern European painters who traveled to Italy at this time, and he had been strongly influenced by the mountainous snowy landscapes he had crossed on his journey. The landscape we see here is definitely from Bruegel's imagination. There are no places in the Netherlands that have the towering mountain peaks we can see in the distance in this picture. In the series, The Gloomy Day, shows us nature awakening in the new year. The scene is set around February or March, the first transitional season of late winter or early spring, and is portrayed by the bleak atmosphere and leafless trees. Bruegel presents a magnificent view of a vast landscape. As in many of his works, the painting incorporates features of the Flemish countryside, as well as his imagined snow-covered mountainous terrain. In the foreground, seasonal tasks are underway, collecting wood, cutting willow switches, and tying them in bundles. In the village below, a man is making repairs to a thatched roof. From this high standpoint, you can see foundering ships, casualties of a storm, one vessel has broken its back on the promontory, and another is in trouble. March is producing its usual crop of unfortunate incidents. In the distance we can see that the mountains have kept their covering of snow. At the head of the bay, a village huddles, sheltered from the open sea by the mountains, and the spit of land in the middle distance. Nearby, a family group are eating waffles, and a young boy wears a paper crown, traditionally associated with the carnival period. This festive event was held just before Lent, in February or early March, depending on the church calendar. The gloom is all pervasive, with the exception of the brilliant white of the attic, which is counterbalanced in the picture by the snow-covered summits on the left. Under a leaden, threatening sky, these details reinforce the sense of the insignificance of man in the face of implacable nature. But, the people in the picture persist in their endeavors, whilst celebrating carnival, marking rebirth, and a brief release from the monotonous demands of daily life. Before Bruegel, landscapes had been used in paintings as backdrops for the main subject of the painting, which usually had a biblical theme. Bruegel featured the landscape, making it as important in the picture as the characters within it. In Bruegel's picture haymaking, the landscape surrounds the men and women going about their ordinary lives, following the natural cycle of the seasons. Bruegel shows the peasants in a preordained and inescapable communion with nature, elevating their hard and mundane lives to something that is heroic, while being idyllic. Bathed, in golden light, this scene in Bruegel's picture, Haymaking, shows the most relaxed time of year for those who worked the land. For the moment, at least, much of the hard work has been done. The cut hay is being gathered in, a man sits and sharpens his scythe, and baskets of recently picked cherries and strawberries overflow. Workers cut the grain with scythes in the large field toward the center of the painting. In the foreground, other laborers carry vegetables and berries to market. Everyone works to bring in the food, men, women, and children. Winter isn't far away, and the hay will sustain the draft horses in the long, cold months ahead. In the lush bounty of this painting, Bruegel is showing us the wisdom of farmers. He shows us the way all people who grow and gather our food are bound to their land. The three women with rakes, at the center of the picture, are among Bruegel's most successful creations. He has chosen their different ages carefully. The youngest, in the middle, looks toward the viewer. Bruegel shows these women as exceptionally attractive. Bruegel's usual characters are often the coarser elements of mankind. This painting, Haymaking, 
is Bruegel's happiest and most splendid work of his series, with its many shades of fresh green, some blue, and a few touches of warm red. The harvesting of corn shown in Bruegel's picture, The Harvesters, is firmly set in August in all Flemish calendars. The billowing masses of ripe wheat dominates the scene, with its all-pervasive yellowness. Only the one great tree in the foreground, where a group of workers can be seen eating, and resting, gives balance to the work. The laborers are having their lunch break. You can see the pears laid out in front of them, picked from the tree just behind. A boy climbs up into the branches to pick the pears, as two women below collect the fruit for lunch. The water pitcher placed in the shade, the alarmed partridges, three girls carrying corn to the hay wagon, people bathing in the pond, each scene reinforcing the theme of the summer's heat. Suddenly, you're on that road, down through that narrow path, with the women, who are carrying bundles on the top of their heads. And you join the caravan, going past the swimming pool. There we find a group of monks, who have stripped down, bathing in the pool. There are children playing a game of cockthrow. And, all of this is shown, not with any sense of mockery, but with a real participation, and a sense of the continuum of life. It's autumn, probably sometime in October or November, and in his picture, Return of the Herd, Bruegel captures the mood with a color scheme that contrasts warmer ochre, and earth tones, in the foreground, with the colder blue tones of the river and distant mountains beyond. The main subject, running in a diagonal from right to left, is the herd of cattle being prodded and guided towards winter quarters in the village by the herdsmen. The subject of a herd of cattle, returning from summer pastures, was not typical of Netherlandish painting, and there is speculation that this is another example of Bruegel drawing on impressions he gained during his travels through Switzerland. He would probably have seen cattle coming down from the alpine pastures, a key event in the peasants' year in those parts, but, unknown in the flat country which is the Netherlands. Bruegel's technique in rendering the herd of cows is particularly fine. The backs of the animals are correctly proportioned, as they make their way up the woodland slope, their skins are also painted with great accuracy. There is a very real sense of their slow, ambling gait, and occasional pauses to enjoy wayside grass. As with most of Bruegel's canvases, the pleasure is in the details, executed with an intense attentiveness. For instance, in a field down by the river, laborers have more or less finished harvesting grapes from the sloping vineyard. Once again, the mood is determined by Bruegel's portrayal of the approaching storm, and the colors of the landscape. The uncertainty of the autumn weather is underlined by the contrast between the stormy, blue-black clouds, advancing from the upper right, and the warmer, brown tones of the hillside in the foreground. The river is bathed in sunshine, forming a line of demarcation between the two zones. Bruegel completed the paintings of the series, Seasons, by February 1566. They were intended as part of a large-scale decorative scheme for the dining room of the Merchant's Palatial House in Antwerp. Bruegel's landscape series was probably hung, high up, on the walls above the panelling, forming a continuous frieze around the room. Three of these paintings are now in the collection of the Art History Museum in Vienna. These are The Gloomy Day, The Return of the Herd, and Hunters in the Snow. The picture haymaking is at the Lebkowis Palace in Prague, and the corn harvest is now at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York.